Thank you so much for the introduction. Quite excited to be here. Last time I was on this stage, it was a dance floor actually, but now it's a bit um, more serious. Um, yeah, thanks uh, to all the organizers of the conference and thanks for all you of you uh, for being here. And uh, thanks to all the people online um, on the different continents, hopefully. Um, yeah, you are all investing your free time, your, your resources, which are very precious uh, to help animals, um, purely moved by compassion and altruism. In my uh, opinion, there is nothing more respectable than than that, fighting for animal rights and animal liberation. Um, yeah, I've been active in the movement for almost 15 years now, and I've seen so many people coming and going. Um, yeah, I know a few activists I, I know since the beginning, but I could say that uh, most of people uh, left the movement. Um, in my opinion, one of the reasons why uh, people leave is that um, yeah, it's because of some very strong convic conviction, some um, ideology, ideologies which can um, separ uh, divide us, we, they are also can bind us, they, they can have us um, moved and uh, motivate us to fight for animals, but it can also divide us. Um, so having to struggle with strong beliefs, sometimes with my own strong beliefs or with strong belief of, um, of others, um, has been one of um, the most challenging um, in my activist career. So I hope that um, measurements and research in general or surveys in particular uh, can uh, help bring some objectivity to discussions. But also I would like to have you understand that uh, even there, there is uncertainty. So what I would like to reach with this presentation is to uh, show you um, a model and a terminology that uh, can help us understand how uh, our work can, um, uh, how, how we can um, track and uh, also monitor the uh, effectiveness of our work as a movement and how we can, um, we can reach a more objective um, observation of reality at least of organization work and uh, or of society in general. And at the end, I would like to introduce you um, to um, a results of a survey uh, which took place in Germany uh, two weeks ago. And yeah, let me introduce you the project I'm working for for a few months. So it's uh, Animal Society. It's a new NGO uh, founded in Germany. Um, we are a team of uh, six people currently, and we have been, we gather an experience of, of about 25 uh, years in the animal rights movements, um, in various fields, in investigations, in um, corporate outreach or in communication in general. We are focusing on uh, outreach, uh, movement building, and in general political campaigns for the rights of interests of animals in Germany in particular, but in the European Union in, in, in general. Um, so politically, uh, there are, of course, plenty of ways to act for animals. Um, uh, of course, our resources are, are limited and we don't have the influence we would like to have. So um, we are at the end quite uh, limited and we have to focus on, on some of them. But basically, you can, um, you can fight for better laws protecting animals. You can fight for uh, better enforcement of these laws or you can uh, fight for um, policies which favors vegan products or which uh, tax uh, animal products, for example, to try to decrease consumption and production of, of animal product and at the end um, to spare animal lives. Um, so we, we are considering all these uh, ways, of course, and we are working to some extent on all these ways, but um, as a first step, what we identify in the last uh, months where we did some research is that in, in general, the state doesn't invest enough resources um, on the defense of animal interests. So basically, animal interests or animals are not, um, not represented at all, actually, uh, strictly uh, taken in state institution, just animal welfare is to some extent because of us, because of some citizens who care about animal protection. Um, it, it is to some extent uh, present in the state, but um, yeah, people working on animal uh, protection in the state institutions uh, are few, they don't have uh, many means, they don't have many, uh, much uh, power, um, and or they are uh, corrupted, they, are, they don't have the independence they should have. 
So that's why we decided to um, to start and concentrate uh, to concentrate on this um, on this strategy client. So to try to strengthen the representation of animal interest in in Germany, um, focusing on uh, three um, three action type of actions. So um, of course we believe that there is a much power in political um, institution in state in institutions in general, and um, it's quite neglected by the, by the movement, uh, at, in particular by the anti-species animal rights movement. Um, some animal welfare organizations, more traditional, they have more means, of course, they are more present on, on this field. And that's what we want to, um, uh, that's the, the gap that we would like to, to fill. Um, so our goal, uh, our first um, strategy uh, line is to inform, so to inform the, the movement, to inform the public, about uh, political issues around animal, uh, what uh, political reforms concern, uh, concern animal much in Germany. We want to increase transparency, so, so to uh, publish, um, to, um, to publish uh, decisions and uh, votes of, um, of, um, MEP, of uh, MPs or MEPs, so of, uh, of politicians in general. We want to, um, to um, activate, so to motivate and, uh, the movement activists to be more involved in, in politics in general, but in parliamentary politics in particular. Um, and um, we want to um, also directly uh, influence uh, political decisions or to organize political campaigns and to, um, uh, to do outreach and uh, lobbyism. Um, actually, today we are launching our first campaign. So it's, um, it's, it's in German, uh, this uh, screenshot, unfortunately. But the goal of this campaign is, as I said before, is uh, like in the long term to have animals represented in, in state institutions. So um, to have animals' interests better, at, in the first steps is to have them better represented in, um, in the state uh, institutions. Um, so co more concrete uh, measures, um, like sub uh, measures of our claim, is to uh, have um, an animal protection officer or commissar, uh, commissioner, you could call it. It's an ombudsman, it's also um, called. So um, uh, to have this on the federal level, it's already existing on some, some regional level in, in Germany, but this is uh, one claim which has already been pushed by the movement in the last uh, years, and this is something we also would like to, to support. Um, then we would like to have the separation of um, animal protection from the Ministry of uh, Food and uh, Agriculture to have a more independent institution and to have, which should have like real power and real means. Um, and in the short term, to have this quite complex solutions, of course, because it needs like a substantial reform of such institution. We are um, asking for a, a commission of inquiry to, uh, to initiate uh, necessary uh, changes. So now we're moving to the main part of the presentation. So I, I speak about evaluation, um, impact assessment, but mostly about uh, survey, because I will introduce some preliminary results of the survey we have uh, done. Uh, in, in August. Um, so there are discussions ma mainly coming from the effective altruist uh, movement um, about what is an effective uh, charity. And this is something I followed in the last uh, years very much. I've been involved um, in some of the work um, to, for example, to assess um, uh, organizations. Um, so I think um, some clarity is uh, is needed there because it's um, often very easy to use the word effectiveness or to state or to self-state that my work is more effective than uh, I don't know than the work of other organizations. But I think um, it's very important to take a closer look at um, what is effectiveness uh, exactly. How would you define it? And if someone is using figure to prove uh, effectiveness of his work, to take a closer look at these figures, where does this figure come from? What are they supposed to, to show? Um, something I find really useful, this resource is also in, in English, actually. It's, um, there are already a lot of, of work being done on assessing organization, not only for the animal movement, actually from other fields. Um, and it's the work done by an organization, a German organization called uh, Fineo. I, I will post the link at the end of the presentation. Um, um, yeah, Fineo is, um, is praising basically 
to be to work impact oriented oriented so for an organization to be impact oriented is basically of course when we are working for the animals is always to always have the the goal um, the end goal so why, why are you doing this uh, action what do you want to reach uh, at the end it's a very precise uh, model so it starts from from level zero it's basically uh, below the the output so you start with with resources it's the 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 um, uh, time from activists for example or maybe some some money some donations your organization is receiving and then that's where you start to carry out um, the activities are as planned so for example you are organizing you're organizing an action or you're posting some articles about animal uh, protection about animals uh, you are sending press releases or you are making studies this is the first step the second step is to uh, you have to make sure that target groups are um, are reached properly. So, for example, to find uh, an appropriate location to reach uh, a broad public, um, and indicators you can use at this stage is uh, the reach, for example, media reach. Or um, on the third uh, stage, you make sure that the, the target groups accept the offer. So it's not uh, it's not it's not enough just to reach people, but if they don't. Um, if they are not rich, if they don't accept the offer, then it's of course it's um, it's a vain. Uh, this is the the output. So I think um, here you haven't reached much. You have just be, just been active, but no effect has been uh, caused, has been produced. The effects uh, started at uh, stage four, um, the first stage of the outcome. That's where uh, people start to change their attitude, so to change their, their mind, to start to become influenced. On the next stage, stage, stage five, uh, people start to change their behavior. So uh, yeah, for us, if we do uh, lobbying, for example, um, we manage to, to reach and to influence some decision makers on stage four and stage five, the decision makers change their decision. So they vote for the animals, for example. On stage six, the decision is being taken. So the vote, the, the law has been passed in favor of the animals. This is still the outcome. The stage seven, which is quite, quite a conservative um, definition, I, I must recall, on the stage seven, uh, society has changed, the law has been passed, and the, the public has um, integrated and accepted the change. Um, um, the change is being enforced. Um, so this is where you can speak of, uh, really speak of impact. Yeah, so what I wanted also to, to illustrate with this step-by-step, um, -step with this uh, result staircase, is that sometimes it's not enough just to speak about how many people you've, you've reached. It's not only about reaching people, but it's about uh, reaching ch uh, change. And there are some people that maybe they're not very visible, but they do lo lobbying um, in their office and they can really reach change for animals uh, very effectively. But yeah, you don't... Um, you don't see them or you don't uh, know about them. Um, and on the other hand, yeah, it's not, yeah, the goal is not to have output, it's not to be active, but it's to, yeah, to have impact. Um, generally speak, speaking, so studies uh, is a general uh, word I, I know, but in, um, in many instances, so it's very difficult, it's very expensive to try to measure your impact um, yeah, you, maybe it's easy for you to uh, be able to measure the number of people you've reached, but you don't know exactly how you change their attitude or you, you change their behavior. So in my opinion, it's not, it doesn't make sense even to try to, to, to assess that. You could do it with surveys, for example, uh, with a certain uncertainty, but it, yeah, it doesn't make sense. You have to recognize that. So um, I, I mean with that, that... Um, to measure absolutely the impact of your work is in many cases, it's, it's uh, impossible. Also, because in all modesty, we, we are like just one agent. We are a few um, animal like parts of the of the bigger movement and species movement. It's, a, it's an ecosystem and um, we are like a small, yeah, we can have a, some so certain uh, impact, but alone, of course, we cannot reach uh, anything. Even I don't think one organization can step that day. Uh, they have been responsible of one change. Uh, yeah. There are many actors in the movement, of course. And, um, so it's, 
difficult or often impossible to state. I, I have had as, as an individual, obviously, or in those organization that you've had that impact, or you've, you've had so much, as much impact. On the other hand, I do think that it's, um, it's possible to iteratively um, improve the quality of your, your work. So to, to assess uh, how many people you reach, if people have been reached, and to, to try to improve that. So to, you don't know how much, uh, how good you've been, but at least you, you know that you can do better and you know that you, you've, doing be you've been doing better than, than a year ago, for example. And this is something you can do through research in general or studies uh, or uh, surveys. Um, so this is um, what can help improve the effectiveness, effectiveness of your work or measuring in general is also what can uh, improve um, accountability of your organization so that you show your supporter, okay, we've done so much, we've done this, it worked well, we've done, done that, it works uh, less well and that you, um, you show that you are transparent and that you are, um, yeah, that you are trying to improve and you are doing your, the best. Um, so now what I would like to introduce uh, you is um, a survey we decided to, uh, to do to prepare our first campaign or even our strategy in the next uh, year, years. So to refine our uh, strategy in general. Um, the goal of this uh, study of this survey uh, where so first to find out what claims are more relevant for the population, for the German population in this case, then to define the target groups, uh, to, divine, to design um, our communication in general or adver advertisement campaign in particular. So how many target groups we should consider. Uh, this is also especially relevant for online um, advertisement campaigns where you can really segment well what kind of interest should have um, the target groups. Um, also, what kind of arguments work better or work less? Because I know, I mean, we have conviction, we are anticipatists, we have a certain uh, language, but of course the population um, might be sensitive to other wordings or to other claims that you might want to integrate in your new arguments. Um, also to, to identify in what fields more research or more outreach is uh, necessary. Um, so for example, if uh, we identify that uh, people don't really understand the claim, uh, doesn't know what position do they have to, to a certain claim, claim, especially in the political field, claims can be also technical and, and difficult to, uh, to understand on the first uh, impression. And um, also having the intention to, uh, to have a benchmark. So if we manage to do this survey every year, then we can try to follow up uh, how uh, people's attitudes is changing uh, towards animal protection uh, in general. Uh, this is a question we of I often receive, even if I've been following animal uh, rights for a long time. But when, people, when someone is asking me uh, if progress are being made, um, I, don't, I, I think so, yeah, but I, I cannot really tell uh, this much or in what field. Of course, it's a very broad question, but um, yeah, and of, uh, with this, um, so this survey has um, a, a total of 20 questions about uh, positions towards um, political change for animals, but we also have some social demographics uh, such as age, education, gender, income, uh, political parties that people uh, vote for. Um, as far as the boundary conditions of the survey uh, are concerned, so it's, it, has, it took place in Germany two weeks ago. Um, the, um, um, the representativity of the survey uh, is based on uh, age, gender, education, and belonging to to the so-called sinus milieu, I will say a bit more about that. So it's uh, like social demographics. Sample size is 1,000. And um, it's only in rich uh, online population because it's an online survey, but it's still representative um, for the German population in general, or enough, at least. Um, yeah, so uh, taking a look at, the f at, at one of the questions, and a key question for us for a strategy is, in your opinion, is the animal perspective adequately represented in, in politics? So 
So the results are quite clear for uh, almost 60% of the population. It's no. So the animal uh, perspective, animal interests are not represented enough in politics. 20%, uh, 90% thinks yes, and 22% doesn't know exactly. So it's quite clear that uh, for German citizens, animal interests are not represented enough in, in politics. So that's our starting point. Uh, so if animals are not present, represented enough in politics, who is failing, who is supposed to represent them and doesn't do the jo the, their job? So we ask the next question, uh, who represents, in your opinion at least, um, animals and their needs in uh, democratic decisions today? The best stakeholder was obviously the animal uh, organization, so animal rights and animal welfare organizations. 70% of the German citizens recognize that um, basically we and you are the best uh, advocates for, for animals in society. And the next groups was uh, from the vets and the ethicists, so much less about one fifth, one fourth of the population thinks that vets, vets and ethicists for di different reasons, in my opinion, um, represent the animal's interests well in, in, in the, uh, democratic decisions today. 50% doesn't know, so we identify there also a lot of, uh, of outreach uh, needed, but in general, low credibility for ethicists and vets. Uh, the last, as you might have uh, guessed, are politicians. So 10% of the people, on, uh, yeah, only 10% of the people think that politician, politicians represent animals well in politics. 46 people, 46%, so almost half of the population thinks they don't. So as you can uh, see or have the con confirmation on this slide, the movement is very needed, is very, it's very recognized by the population that uh, we are important for animals. And also because we are the one who can pressure the other stakeholders. So the, 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 the veterinary services, uh, the, um, this is, I don't think it's necessary, uh, but the politicians uh, at least to do that job. As far as expectations are concerned, um, all about the same, at least for statements, for um, propositions that we have listed. So about three fourths of the, the German population thinks in general that a major a radical change is needed in animal husbandry uh, politics or so mostly concern farm animals the way it was, it was uh, phrased. Um, so ma a major change is needed. Um, if an elected representative should be if a representative should be named, should be elected at a federal level to represent animal interests, or to represent, to, to, uh, to defend animals. Also three fourths of the population says yes. And the same kind of support even uh, more popular for a change in a more ethical animal welfare law. Without, without going into detail, what would be this law? What would be the, the power of such a representative? Um, or if we support uh, that as an organization, but at least it shows that um, citizens uh, support a radical change for animals. As far as uh, diets and ethics is concerned, it's, even if it's not something I, we, um, we are dealing with directly as an organization because we are uh, working more on institutional uh, change, but it still, was still interesting to have this question. So in the... Um, in the survey, we had about, it was 3% of uh, the respondents being uh, vegan, 5%, 5.5% 5 .5 being vegetarian. So about 8, 8.5% 8 of the population based on this survey uh, is vegan or vegetarian in Germany. About 29% per, 29 in, in total are, or call themselves um, reducitarian or pescatarian. Um, of course, it's, uh, it's uh, the, uh, it's a self naming or like self uh, judging, but at I think it's uh, still interesting for people for, uh, to have like to know how people identify uh, themselves. And um, yeah, as, so it's quite low. You can say like eight percent of the population. It's still still good, but of course we are still a very 
a small minority. In comparison, you have almost half of the population, uh, 43%, who knows, who recognizes that veganism is the most ethical uh, solution for animals. So obviously, you see a different between, big difference between attitude, what people know, what people think, or maybe even believe, and what people uh, do. And 74% um, of the population is willing, also like self declared, is willing to pay more uh, for animal welfare. So if they buy meat or animal products in general, they say that they are willing to pay, to pay more for it. So that, that could strength, strengthen, for example, a, um, a reform or a, a animal welfare tax, for example, which is a prop uh, proposition which, which is, which, which is uh, uh, which starts to grow in Germany. Um, to take a more uh, closer look to the results, we can use the um, uh, so-called sinus milieu or target, you can call them the Oxford, uh, target groups. Groups. These are 10 uh, groups um, which, are, um, which are used to, to segment, to categorize the, the German citizens or the German um, consumers. So they are being defined by an institute called the uh, Sinus Institute in, in Germany. These two groups are defined by, these 10 groups are defined by two dimensions. You, you first have the social uh, position, social dimension, which is um, more based, which is more um, passive. So it's more based on income, education, profession, something which is a bit more static that you cannot change that uh, easily yourself. This is the, this is the Y axis here. So social position on the one hand. So it's what you could say also uh, class for, from lower class to upper class. And on the X axis, you have the basic or orientation. This represent more the, the consciousness, the lifestyle or the values, the life goal. And on this slide, you can uh, see the different, the 10 groups and their names on the charts. So that's the names and the definitions you can use to segment your, your, your citizens, your voters, your consumers. Uh, this institute is working in general on social demographics, but they work for also for, for companies or a lot for political parties also. And this is a kind of, of standard also so if you speak on, for example, on uh, about social ecologicals, then people will know there are publications or companies or parties will know what kind of people uh, are social ecologicals. So of course, it's a simplification of, of uh, reality. People are, are, is being asked, the respondents are being asked a series of 21 questions. And, um, and depending on the answers, then they are being labeled basically. Uh, and the reality is continuous, uh, but at least I think it's still better to have this kind of model, which is, I think, still complex with 10 different groups than just to say the people, people vote this, the people want that, the people buy, buy product A or product B. Um, the use of target groups and the use of sinus milieu in, in particular can uh, help us very much in identifying uh, what are the best target groups for our campaign, with people, uh, what people are more often to our claims. So if you take a look um, on vegetarian and, on, and vegan, so the question I showed you like the, uh, the summary uh, before, you can see that um, you have two polls. So one polls more on the right-hand side, they, they represent is being represented by people who are more like trendsetters, uh, more open to change, um, also a bit individualistic. So the so-called hedonists, uh, hedonists and the cosmopolitan avant-garde. In this group, actually, it's about 50-50, 50% of vegans, 50% of vegetarians, about 6% vegans, 6% vegetarians. And on the... Um, more in the middle, on the left-hand side, um, probably um, like older citizens, older consumers who are rather vegetarian than, than vegans. So I would say, and, and also people who are 
uh, socially responsible and politically more involved. So you have basically two groups, um, like younger, more like lifestyle, and here more political and uh, more established. Um, yeah, the, you can use also some stereotypical uh, pictures from from the groups that can help us also to identify or to have like a persona. Um, also, it can help us to uh, to uh, design our um, our info info material or our, our booklets, for example, if you want to target a group in particular. To the next uh, question, so asking. What, um, what is in your opinion, what are in your opinion the three more, more important, most important uh, social issues or problems in Germany? Um, then most people say it's uh, environment, uh, climate change, about two thirds of the population. And then it was uh, Corona, it was COVID-19. Then it was about social differences with about 50%. Then it was causes of uh, flights, migration for about 28%, and animal issues came on uh, place uh, five of eight. So not at the top, only with 20% uh, of the respondents choosing animal wealth and or animal suffering caused by animal exploitation. Um, and quite clearly here in this, for these questions, uh, for this question, women with 27% of uh, women a naming animal um, suffering due to animal exploitation as one major problem and only 13% of men. So you can say women cared, uh, uh, twice as many women cared than, uh, than about animals than men. Also younger people, 25%, so overrepresented. And, um, and less educated uh, people also tend to name animal, uh, animal suffering as a major issue. 26% in comparison to more educated people, 15%. Um, so, um, yeah, moving to the next um, next slide. So on evolution, so we, we have, we have um, answers, we have replies to, the, to our key questions, which help us to design our campaign. And all we also have information about what kind of people, what personnel, what target groups um, answered more favor uh, favorably to, to the questions. We also have information uh, independently of that on the, uh, of the, on the change of, um, of this milieu in time. So if is this milieu tend to decrease or tend to increase, it can be also helpful. Uh, for our, um, uh, yeah, for our strategy to strategize in the long term, for example, we have also information on uh, where these people tend to live. So you have maps uh, of, of Germany and other um, German-speaking uh, countries um, about where these groups are overrepresented or underrepresented. So you could even use that um, to organize an action maybe in a, in a city rather than in others, or maybe to have an advertisement campaign more in a city where you see that the target groups with, which is uh, more open to your claims is uh, represented. So as a summary, uh, takeaway from the takeaways from the survey. So with, with this survey, I only show you a very small part of the results and we have to do a lot of um, analysis about, about it uh, further. We're able to identify which target groups um, will potentially support our campaign the most, what arguments or what values resonate to them, in what geographical zones they are living, uh, what parties they rather vote for. So we are able also to prove to parties that people is concerned by animal issues, that there are um, a few strong asks for our campaign, which are supported by the citizens and by a large part of the citizens. We can show to politicians that also their supporters uh, care, since some ask are supported through all parties, even by conservative uh, uh, voters. Um, it gives credibility and legit legitimacy to our ask. In uh, particular, that uh, people, that animal, uh, know that animals are not represented, are not represented enough, or uh, well by politicians or by vets that a commissioner for animal welfare is needed in Germany and that citizens know that animal agriculture is not an appropriate institution to take care of animal protection. 
and we can have a benchmark on the attitude of the population toward political change for animals. Um, we have the possibility uh, to geograph geographically localize where some relevant groups are more represented. Um, so as I said before, there is still much to learn from this survey and uh, we'll continue the research uh, in the next months. And we plan also to, uh, to, to release uh, more results so that other organizations or activists can also profit from it. That's it. Uh, thanks for your attention. And here is something you can uh, take a picture of. Um, so if you want to do research, uh, to, uh, to do surveys, I would recommend you to contact Phonalytics or to check their website. They have a lot of resources. They even have online office hours to uh, advise you. Um, the webpage of the Sinus Institute with more resources. Then a part of the results, we already um, published them. It's online in German and in English. And uh, yeah, don't hesitate to support our campaign. It's online and to share it. Thanks.